got my milk and we'll, we'll finish something so I was reading online and I'm doing that thing again that I always do where I like spend a huge amount of my time just doing one of everything and then if I want to replay the game it's going to be like I know the first dates of like every character and then maybe the second dates of a load of them but then it means I'm going to be like seeing a lot of re repetitive texts so I thought like <laughs> I, I quickly spied a walkthrough and it was basically like you go on three dates you get your third heart and then that's like the guy you're with or whatever So I thought, you know, as I'm literally one heart away from Matt, and I kind of just want to knock this LP on the head at this point, because it's been a few hours, I'm thinking, yeah, just like, finish the LP. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Woo! Yeah, just finish the LP at this point. Instead of messing around, you know? Because it's like, you know, like... All the characters are pretty cool, but like... You know, I don't want it to be hours of me then messing around, you know? I'm ready. Because, yeah, you just like that, like... <laughs> you know, actually progress the story, you know, just sitting around on the first date with everybody, then the second date with everybody, then going, oh yeah. Oh. It's getting a bit tiring, you know? Because, you know, then I have to show stuff again if I decide to go and show every ending, which I'm not probably not going to do, because for the pigeon dating, it took forever, like, to do all of those and I still didn't fully finish it because it was like weird the harsh conditions to get the true ending. Mm -hmm. Matt and I have spent a lot of time together lately after we went record shopping the first time. It sort of became a weekly tradition for us to scope out vinyl fantasy. <laughs> Puns. On quieter days, I'll go to the coffee spoon to just hang out with him. Now, yeah. trying new drinks. Been time with Matt, Carmen, Cito, and Amanda have become really close friends. I'm glad we're seeing all of this character development rather than just a text box saying character development has occurred. Fuck you. <laughs> that photography, helping out with how we're introducing her to music is not just boy bands. Wouldn't she know more about it if her dad's like a music head? <laughs> Amanda's a good mentor. The open mic night is tonight. Amanda and I busy ourselves getting ready. I tried to pick out a nicer outfit and pace around another bunch of really cool bands gonna be playing. I'm excited to see him. I haven't been to a show since the first time Matt and I hung out. Weird. He didn't actually play piano for me. Like, all of this stuff references that you pressured him to play piano for you, and actually, I backed off because he seemed upset. And then later, everyone's like, cool, he played piano for you? He hasn't done that in ages. And I'm like, I think there's an error. <laughs> like, I didn't, he didn't actually play piano for me. I didn't push pressure him to play piano for me. <laughs> I play piano for him. Oh, I can kind of see the reason why from a mile off, because he was in a band with his wife and then his wife died or like whoever, the mum of Carmen Sita. So... Yeah, to some degree, he's probably quite, like, awkward about playing any of his instruments now, because he just feels, like, weird about it. And they're like, I don't know why, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure we all know why. Yep. Yeah. Amanda pops her head. 
he pinches the bridge of her nose. Dad, we talked about this. What? The sandals. They're older than I am. Vintage, some would argue. <laughs> I thought you threw them out. Amanda, since when did you enroll in the Fashion Police Academy? I got kicked out because I was a loose cannon who didn't play by the rules. For example, you're not allowed to mix florals, but you totally can if you have a good eye for colour. You're out of your jurisdiction, rookie. Amanda guards the door until I pick out a better outfit. Stop! Those sandals are going directly into the evidence locker. What's the... It's the trash. I propose a compromise. I keep the sandals but won't wear them tonight. Then we have this exact same argument the next time I try to pull them out. No meow. We gotta go. The pup concert. Ah, setting up on stage. I don't see Matt, but I'm sure he's busy in the back. There are many endings to this. I just had a quick look at the endings, like not actually like seeing the endings and spoiling myself, just the amount of ending pathways that there are. And there's like one where you're just a dick to Amanda. If you choose all of the like, I'm being a dick to Amanda choices in her conversation, she's just then really disappointed in you. And you get an achievement saying that you're a bad father. <laughs> it was just like, wow, who could be a dick to Amanda, you know? Like, if she, when you walk in on her crying, you're just like, yeah, well, fuck you, I don't care. Or, like, you know, like, I'm now worried that I've done enough to trigger that, like, and not done enough to make, like, this dad like me, but we'll see if, like, that. I also read that because I slept with uh, Robert at the beginning that I basically shut off my ability to get his good ending because I, like, slept with him on the first date. <laughs> so that was funny. They do their secret handshake, some complicated clapping with their hands, and then a big hug. Captain. Ah, it's Hugo and Damien. You know, there also seems to be some canonical couples or, like, groups of dads that hang out, like Damien and Hugo, and, like, Craig and Robert are seen together a lot. And you feel, like, a little bit like you're imposing on those guys. I don't know what Brian's deal is. Brian's just around, especially around the Christian minister guy, Joseph. I don't know about Matt, though. A dedicated patron of the arts. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice. Sometimes it gets a bit odd, even for my admittedly eclectic tastes. You guys seen Matt around? Yeah, he was just helping that Pablo kid get some equipment out of his van. Whoa, vacant veil of playing a set? What? <laughs> it's a witch house. Damien's ears perk. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I knew you dig witch house. He's a witch house guy. Amanda says it's not delightful. Shame. Alright, I'm gonna go find Matt. See if he needs help. It's Pablo. Still in that dirty shirt. The t-shirt salesman will not wear a good piece of merch, and that really disappoints me. I head to over to the north. What the fuck are these weird no-brand, like, cans that don't seem to have any cushion at all? For the ear, it just seems to be two rounded donuts of plastic. They look hella uncomfortable, my dude. How I never noticed that, along with his Chun Li bracelet. <laughs> and his weird seaweed hair. Let's stop being mean to Pablo. I guess that would be like the canon couple for like Matt is that he hangs out with Pablo all the time. I find Matt going over some last minute show details of Pablo. My dude! We share a full on sincere bro hug. We were off screen really good friends now, but we couldn't be bothered to show that, so. <laughs> you guys need any help? 
I think we're all set. Fuck off. <laughs> um, Paolo, can you remind me what other order people are coming going up in? Peak and Vale. <laughs> Witch Diaries with the weird A from... Mm. And then the third waves who are all extremely attractive and could beat me up and I'd still be into it. Playing a free person acoustic set. Got a little bit of spoken word in here. Magic act. <laughs> and then it looks like we're closing with Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. No, absolutely not. I remember the ridiculous set that this band put on when they opened up for Park. Oh, it's those guys! Oh, no! <laughs> Sometimes when it's quiet, I can still hear the sound of an accordion being violently thrown against the wall over and over. They weren't... that bad. <laughs> they were. No, you don't understand. The last time they played Open Mic Night, they lit their bassist on fire and the fire marshal had to shut us down. They also refused to pay for their drinks. Yeah, they sound like entitled assholes. Can we just kick them out? They're not playing. Well, they're outside. Oh, 17 of them. Tell them we're full. And who's filling their spot? Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll play. What are you doing? <laughs> what would you even do? Stop talking. Close your mouth. The Scumminess Manifesto is making a comeback solo show. Thought you didn't know how to play anymore. You don't know how to play anymore. <laughs> I think I chose the wrong answer, you know. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to ma make Matt play. Scar comes to you in the hour you need it most without fail. Stop being so desperate to please your whole friend. <laughs> Is there a keyboard around? Your unending first will be your ultimate downfall. <laughs> I have one right here. Then it's settled. Dude, are you sure? No, I'm not. As sure as I could be. As sure as guys generally play with staccato notes on the upbeat. Well, as long as nothing gets set on fire, it can't possibly be worse. Oh, trust me. Matt grabs me by the shoulders and sensually stares into my eyes. Danke schon, Kapitan. I owe you big time. I don't know why he slipped into German there. Oh, I think I've fucked up this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, like, I was supposed to have said, Matt, you'll play, right? Why can't we form a band? Why wasn't that an option? Did I do something wrong? That would have been cool. Amanda, with Amanda, watch the show. The house is packed with a few people standing outside. What have I got myself into? I may have made a mistake, Amanda. Did you buy pants, more sandals? I agreed to pull out my scar. <laughs> Horror. <laughs> Absolutely not. The screen is shaking. I had to, to help Matt. Dad, I love you and I support you, but we left scar behind for a reason. It's either this or we're in the splash zone for a group of 20 musicians all crying at the same time for the sake of art. I'm not being hyperbolic about the splash zone thing. They literally hand out ponchos. Somehow this is the preferable option. I just have to play the thing. Play what thing? You don't know how to play anything. <laughs> just promise me you'll still love me after this. I promise. But I may have to change my last name and I hope you will understand. Of course. My last name is gonna be Fire Blast. Amanda. Or maybe Cold Steel. Matt takes the stage to a roar of applause from the crowd. He grabs the mic and addresses us all. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Matt's nervous. And I'm so nervous. I can't stop staring at his mouth and that makes me even more nervous. We have a jam-packed roster of amazing local talent who you might already know or maybe have seen before but would like to see again and I'm rambling now, sorry. Good, I read that properly. <laughs> oh, Matt. So, uh, let me just bring on a dear friend of mine who's making his live show debut. Please welcome to the stage, Vacant Veil! <laughs> the crowd cheers again and Pablo bounds up to the stage beaming. He sets up his two laptops and keyboard and launches into his set. Thank you everyone, this one is called Witch House Never Dies and You're Next. What? <laughs> 
Honestly, with a name like Vacant Veil, I was expecting something heavier than just two keyboards and a laptop, but, like, at the same time, like, it says house, so, like, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Inaccessible synth bass layered under drum samples and clips from science fiction shows played in reverse. It's maybe not the right show for this, but everyone seems to enjoy whatever the fuck this is. At the end of the song, Pablo jumps on the mic. Thank you all to the Veil Wearers who came out tonight. Somebody cheers. He has a fan base. He has a name. This is his first show and he has a fan base. And a name for them. <laughs> He's got t-shirts printed. Also, I'd like to thank my mom for coming out to watch me play. You're my rock ma. Love you, honey. <laughs> Pablo plays a few more songs that are actually super fun to listen to. Wow. Definitely did not see that coming, especially after Amanda's strongly worded thoughts about the genre. Once he's done, he vacates the stage and Matt jumps back up again. Big round of applause for Pablo, who coincidentally works here. Yay, Pablo. And hey, uh, next up are a group of young ladies who have been tearing up the East Coast with Riot Punk for three years now. Years, I meant years. Three years. Oh, I read it as years anyway. I'm sweating, I'm sorry, uh, uh, he seems just as nervous as I am. Considering I just signed up to play a set after not knowing a single song, yeah. Third waves. Buzzcut Molly, followed by two girls with colourful hair and fishnet stockings, all of them wearing combat boots and all of them look mad. They don't have artwork. It's like literally there's hardly any women in this. I look over to Amanda, who's clearly enjoying the hell out of an anarchic, female-fronted punk rock. Dad, can I get a lip ring? Sure, if you pay for it yourself. Come on, it's no fun if it's not an act of youthful rebellion. After the third waves close out their set, a variety of acts play to the delight and sometimes horror of the crowd. Magician tries to turn a cup of coffee into a cup of coins, but ends up spilling hot coffee all over himself and dropping coins. As each act leaves the stage, I get more and more nervous. There are so many people here. I don't know anything other than it has keys and you have to touch the keys. Also, I almost spill the flat white stripes in my hand because I'm trembling. Flat white stripes. No joke, Dad, I'm rooting for you. You're going to knock him dead. Thanks, Manda Panda. This is honestly a nightmare dream sequence that I've engaged in and I don't know what to do. Uh... <laughs> An improv comedy show takes the stage, they take suggestions and end up doing a scene that was supposed to be about coffee but instead turns into five minutes of dick jokes. Classic. I have a hard time laughing. My stomach is tying itself into balloon animals. <laughs> Out of nowhere, Matt sits down next to me. Hey, are you doing okay? <laughs> I'm totally fine. Everything is great. Nothing is wrong. <laughs> I want to reassure him I'm okay, but I just can't get the words out. I'm here. <laughs> All right, just making sure. I know you're going to do great. Help me. Help. No. <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Captain Swagwash! No, the sheer and it means shock! I'm as shocked as you! Hey! Oh, you can call me by my stage name Frankie Two Tone, Five Iron Freddy, Thomas Kalnoki. I don't know any. What is the. I don't get these references. <laughs> I, sit, I sit down at the piano. There's a lot of keys. Do pianos usually have keys? God, these lights are really bright. Someone coughs. I guess uh, that's some good stage manner. And now I have to play a song. This song is called Be Me Up Scotty. Deep breath. How hard can it be? Oh, there's a mini game. Oh! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Why can't I? <laughs> no, what am I doing? No, <laughs> not even. 
even it's like it's like surgeon simulator. Oh no 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 He's not even playing a chord if I wanted him to. Look, he's just hitting the keys. <laughs> no. <laughs> I am dying inside. I have dreams like this where, like, members of Kill Switch Engage and Dream Theater and Lamb of God say to me, Hey, our guitarist or our lead singer's sick. Can you cover for him? And I'm like, Yeah, I can. They get up on stage and go, I don't know any of their songs. Fuck. <laughs> like, just try and improv Lamb of God's entire set. Doing your best deserves an S. <laughs> yeah, that's that's physical pain. If you have performance anxiety, yeah, the dreams of where it's like, and now guest guitarist, me on stage with Kill Switch, and I'm like trying to fumble through my curse, like, um, <laughs> like I forgot I haven't played in all. <laughs> <laughs> At time I fucked up in my dream I fucked up the riff to pull me under whilst playing live with Dream Theater and was just like everyone knows I'm a fraud <laughs> like the worst thing oh no I'm losing them Scar is dead I killed it everybody Scar everybody Scar like a checkerboard tie-wearing angel descending from two-tone heaven, Matt walks on stage playing the guitar. We lock eyes. He gives me a smile as if at least plays the chords to the song. I look out and see the crowd go wild to Matt's appearance. Everyone's bouncing. It fills me with renewed energy as I, we jump into the chorus. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty, to the Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> Matt jumps into an improvised solo that was way better than the one Darren Springstead wrote in high school. We make it to the end of the song in one piece and the crowd goes mild. I'm moist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Seller, the captain, the captain screams. They all start chanting Matt's name. They want to hear you play, man. <laughs> not me, can I leave? I think I'm ready. Good for you, I'm not. <laughs> I excuse myself from the stage and take my seat next to Amanda as Matt goes to the I take back what I said about Scar, that was pretty cool. I high five and we look toward the stage. Hey everyone. Cheers. I haven't played in front of people for a long team, but it's cool to be back. I'm glad I didn't fuck up this date just because I was like, yes, I will help. Ah, oh, Scar. <laughs> Matt locks eyes with me. Oh, did I just get friend zoned? With a good friend. <laughs> Who helped me to be able to do this again. Danke schön. Oh, one from Stillness the Dancing. The entire crowd jumps to their feet. Matt closes his eyes and starts playing an upbeat, intricate melody. The crowd sways. Matt looks entirely at peace with a small smile on his face as he sings. <laughs> After he finishes his song, the crowd insists on an encore. He ends up playing a few more tunes to an adoring audience before anking everyone. The moment he gets off stage, he gets mobbed by people. Everyone seems to be amazed that he's playing again. And I'm just stood in the back, forgotten. <laughs> Damien Fred that way through the crowd to talk to me. That was amazing. It really wasn't, but sure. It was certainly a sight. Do they make industrial dark wave scar? They should. It's never late, just too late to start a band, apparently. I glance back at Matt, who is hugging a bunch of people. They really seem excited to see him play. Well, yeah, he hasn't played since he lost Hulza. What? I didn't realize. Because apparently I'm the only person who can't predict a plot this obvious. <laughs> like, of course this, like, it must have taken him so much for jump on stage with me just now. The crowd filters onto the street. The show ends. I decide to stick around a little longer to see if I can talk to Matt. Oh, she still looks like she's in a different art style to a lot of the rest, but like, I don't know what it is, it's like, 
I don't know what it is. I can't tell if it's the shading or the line art style. It's like a little thicker. It's not though. Like the shading's pretty similar though if you look at I mean an X kind of thin, but that's not. <sighs> I'm taking Carmen C to get Ice Queen. Is it okay if she sleeps over? We're gonna paint our nails and start a punk band. Yeah, go have fun. Just please don't wake up the neighbors with any biting truths about our government or whatever. Don't worry, we'll wake them up figuratively instead. They bump fists and head out. I spot Matt finishing up conversations with a couple stragglers on 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 their way out of the coffee shop. Hey, Matt. Hey, dude, you're still here. Get the fuck out of the shop. Need help closing up? Hey. Hey. Hey, boy. <laughs> I'd love that. Yay, good, because I fear rejection. Matt and I stack up chairs and sweep the floor in silence. We carry the stage equipment back to Matt's van, but we see Pablo selling merch. He's actually doing it. Shirts of the finest quality, every step of production from thread to stitch, overseen by yours truly. Graphic designs fit for a king. That kid's gonna go far. We head back into the coffee spoon and Matt's put the finishing touches on closing. When we're all done, Matt and I lean up against the counter. Thanks for saving me from myself up there. All in all, it ended up being pretty cute. Plus, you protected us from Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. Someone told me that they tried to do a street performance down the road and they all got arrested for trying to form a human pyramid in traffic. Did it feel good to be on stage again? No. Yeah, <laughs> they really did. Heard that you stopped playing after your wife died, and now it feels really weird that I just brought that up so cleanly. Uh, thanks for ruining the vibe. He wants to say something, but he's having a hard time getting it out. Because I fucked up the quest line. He takes a deep breath. I hate you. <laughs> that would be the ultimate like punchline of one of these. They take a deep breath and go, there's something I need to tell you. You're really fucking annoying. <laughs> I'm not really a people person, obviously. Crowds make me nervous as all hell, which is uh, not exactly the best before performing life. I find it works okay for me. When I was with Rosa, she lit up the room. I could follow her lead. After she passed, I was lost. Even touching a guitar hurt too much. So steel strings, right? Sorry, that was really immature. <laughs> what a fucking lame joke. Uh, I tried playing for people over and over, but the music would never come out. So I just gave up. I guess what I'm trying to say is, life wasn't this scary when I had someone in my corner. Someone I felt safe with. Am I your new Rosa? <laughs> He's now going to say, Pablo, come over here, my best friend. Oh, he helped me through some tough times. I'll be like, <laughs> what changed? You. You changed. No, I stayed the same. <laughs> I just showed up. Blood rushes to my face. Sugoi. <laughs> When I saw you looking so scared on stage, you reminded me of myself, and I don't want anyone else to have to feel that bad. But when I got up there and started playing for the first time in forever, I felt comfortable. I was having fun. I had spent all this time being so afraid of performing that I forgot how much I loved it. Your strength gave me strength. Whether you were trying to or not, you got me out of my comfort zone, so thank you. Thank you for helping me realize that I can do this. I'm glad I could help you coming on stage. I didn't think you would stick your neck out for me like that, especially considering all this. That really means a lot to me. Well, you mean a lot to me. Ah, oh, we lock eyes and a Pokemon battle happens. Oh, he kisses me. He pulls away and covers his mouth. Oh god, I'm sorry. I uh, can't believe I just kissed you. Oh, never can I, but... I'm glad you did. A lot of facial hair in both of these kisses, I, you know. Must be a weird kind of feeling. <laughs> I don't know. Moustache on moustache, it feels just... Mm. I mean, I don't even know how that would feel. 
Is it like kissing a cat? Our lips touch again. I brush his hair out of the way and rest my hand on the small of his back. Wait, what? It's gone dark. I turn off the lights. Everything about him is sweet and soft. His lips taste vanilla. He smells like coffee cake. He's a baker. <laughs> I can feel him smile through the kiss, which makes me smile. He laughs into my mouth, and I can't help but laugh to our teeth knocking. <laughs> that sounds so gross. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Ow. The moment I opened my eyes, I realized we're still leaning against the espresso machine. <laughs> yeah, maybe the place of work's not a great place for this stuff. Maybe you're right. Let's go back to my place. Um. Yeah, omelets. Day complete. He never takes his glasses off except in these pictures. What the hell? Yeah, I S rank this dad. King of carrot flowers. Now what happened? Anything else happened? Do I get a like post thing? I think I finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. Oh, we just time skip. Okay, be cool, Captain. Be cool. Amanda has not aged or changed her clothes in a year. <laughs> Amanda walked <coughs> through the door with a sus, sus look on her face. <coughs> Joking on milk. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy. Rats. What? No. Sorry, sweetie. It's the feds. You asked too many questions. That life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but even I'm no match for the power and the funding of the US government. But if they think they're gonna take me alive, they got another thing coming. I'm kidding, you're right. I have a little surprise for you. I'm married! <laughs> Very bad line. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in Le Quichon? It would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth, is it, Matt? It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Ah, oh, Dad, you... I whip the cloth off the table, Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably wouldn't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought I might be nice to take a piece of home with you. DVD box set of long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. I don't think I got the bad dad ending. Thanks, God. Thank God. I was being nice. You want to hang out with me in the backyard? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow her. Oh, she didn't go to uni and come back. She's just finished high school. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> you just all appear out of nowhere like an ensemble. Whoa! <laughs> you told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your party. None of your friends are here, only mine. <laughs> Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Peers for Waluigi. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is, fully customizable down to the type of mac. <laughs> it's an ice cream cake. The good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, just go have fun with your pals. Who I didn't invite, I only invited these hot men. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Oh, her friends are off screen. Good, you have friends. I'll just stay with this weirdly, like, they're all looking at me except for Damien. <laughs> it's kind of unnerving, especially as they're all blinking. <laughs> Make sure everyone's having a good time. Why make the rounds? They're here. 
First mac and cheese. The unnerving stares of like six people. Oh, hello, Pablo. You're here too. Pablo, how's the shirt business going? My bad. I got men's shirts, women's shirts, tank tops, all kinds of sizes, shapes, colors. Each one of them are fine quality. Screen printed with the logo and visage of world renowned witch house outfit Vacant Veil. Purchase for most respectable retailers. But more specifically, out of the trunk of my car, I'm also selling my mum's world famous homemade apple butter. What is apple butter? Never stop hustling. Baby, you got it. Captain. Oh, fuck off, Brian. <laughs> Damn it, Brian. <laughs> Brian, sorry, I've never spoken to you more than twice. What happened? Yeah, I noticed you don't pass up on good food. <laughs> sorry, that was mean. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. The one? Just not bad? Oh, fuck you, Brian. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, you Brian-y asshole. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Damn it. Something about Daisy, I just... She's wearing a different kind of pattern shirt to her dad, but they like seem to synchronize way more than the other... Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. <laughs> Thank. Thank! <laughs> so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This will never be over. Why do I even invite him to shit? Oh, <laughs> Craig. Hey, bro. Bro. This is a real rager. Taking our older age into consideration. <laughs> and trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. Baby's like, where the fruit punch at? <laughs> I'm really glad we're bros again. Were we not? Oh, I guess because like, we moved here. Yeah, I just moved here. Me too, dude. Brian and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Still like with the... Do they just always wear? The... Okay. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all the ice cream cake. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? <laughs> Briar ate four pieces, ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. You wear your outfits differently. You have your face. No one will ever believe you. You have different hairstyles. They're not even that similar. It's just the faces. Who boy. I'll let you guys figure out the cake problem. Good seeing you, Craig. Hang soon, ya. Yeah. Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. To be honest, it was either going to be Craig or Matt the first time round, because I fucked up the Robert quest line, and Joseph's okay. He's got a whole, like, you can, like, mod the game to get a secret ending with him. That's all weird that they cut from the game. There's like a hidden ending that you can't actually get unless you hack the game or break it or something. Like you have to like, there's just hidden backgrounds in the data that someone data mined. And I was like, oh cool, a spoopy ending and like, it's way too much work for me to bother. <laughs> like, looks like you settled into the neighborhood. No thanks to you. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you more at church events. Mm -hmm. Where's the local temple, satanic temple? Do you know? <laughs> Got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. I know your secrets. Maybe if you aren't doing anything there, we could hang out sometime. Dude, you kind of sound needy. Like, he's like, please, hang out with me. Please, like, dude, I chose Matt. <laughs> like, well, see you later. Yugo comes up to me with mac and cheese. A perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Captain. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to a dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. 
A scholarship money will really help. <laughs> Walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Say hi to your teacher. Hey. Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Yeah, thanks. Awkward finger gun. Brenda starts to back away. She's so awkward. I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you a detention. Yeah, I'm going to bring anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's your backyard. <laughs> Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? No. And I have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... Your fan to college, just fine. Hey, Bobbo, glad you found the whiskey. <laughs> yep. Why is he being cold? Oh, everything okay, buddy? Sure. Why won't you talk to me? I thought we had something. Come on, Captain, you know what this was. Oh. I cry? You <laughs> you were an object to me the same way I thought I was an object to you. I figured we were on the same page here, at least from how you were acting. <sighs> but I don't want to be in this if there are feelings involved. I got too much to deal with as it is. Robert, you're killing me, man. Killing me. I'll catch you around. Fuck, man. In the heart. <laughs> Stabbed in the heart. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Why would you call it that? Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. I stare at Lucian. He knows, I know. But I am a man of me word. The story of his oregano betrayal will go unsung. Thanks for coming by, neighborinos. Hey, it's Amanda and Carmen Sita in a corner of the party. I wonder what they're up to. As I walk up, I can tell they're already deep in conversation. It's like prison rules. First day of high school, you got to establish yourself at the top of the pecking order. Really? No, just find a group of people that you like and hang out with them. Be yourself. Don't worry about being cool. You'll find friends. Try not to kiss anyone who also has braces. You get stuck, kiddo. Hey guys. Hey, Amanda's dad. Kamashita is getting ready for high school. Got any advice? When you join band, pick the easiest instrument to carry. I'm still walking a little sideways from my sousaphone days. Flute it is. Alright, I'll leave you guys to leave to it. Kamashita, me and Amanda... Still on for dinner with you and your pops tomorrow? Yes, we're already planning a carrot cake for you guys. I better keep making rounds. I leave the, the two to keep conspiring. The filter changes. As of, oh, it's afternoon. The back porch steps. Sun is setting. Everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So... I, uh, also have something for you. Is it murder? For me. Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but I hate you. Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Yeah, I didn't get bad that ending. I'm a good dad. You've been there for me through everything. There's been times in my life when you were my only friend. Aww. A relationship I never had with my parents. <laughs> I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you. But I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this. And I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God. I cry all the time. You're the best dad. I love you. I'm crying. That was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. You're crying. Present time. 
Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. I already have one of these. Kind of shocking all of our photos, <laughs> just pictures of me. I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. Talented, intelligent young woman. And I'm excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. We share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories for me can stuff to break. Ah, I'm gonna have so much stuff. Yay, what's best dad? Intentionally and unintentionally, you're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. Pablo. <laughs> I comes over to the back of the yard. While Matt is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree, he smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emma's are gonna go get ice cream. Love you, Pops. Don't you hate Emma now? She was a dick. <laughs> Amanda runs off to join her friends. Oh, well, this is nice. Why do I have such a nice backyard? I take a seat next to Matt as the last guests make their way out of the party. Seems like Amanda really enjoyed this. Thanks for putting together such a nice surprise. Come and see his middle school graduation is coming up in a year or two. I'm sure for the right fee, I could put something together. Only if I get to DJ. Matt looks down at his hands. It seems like he does that whenever he's trying to figure out the right words to say. Hey. I just wanted to say that. Ah, oh, gosh. Just going to come out dumb no matter how I say it. So here goes. I haven't felt this happy in a long time. I know, this is a nice tree lantern pond arrangement. Whoa. You brought out the best in me. <laughs> well, I don't even know what that was. It wasn't just because of the scar, although that was cute. Every moment that we've gotten to spend together since we met has been an adventure, and I just hope that we get to keep doing that. Yeah, fuck Robert. We make a good team, you know. I have Matt. <laughs> I'll let you handle the music playing and the music singing and actually pretty much everything related to music. But I can organize a party pretty well. I'm also good at kissing, so that's a big plus. That's true. You're very nice to kiss. <laughs> I wonder if Carmen Seater and Amanda know. Like, you know, it's never referenced that they know in conversation. It's like, you know... Do you know that I'm dating your friend's dad? Do they have... I mean, they're probably, like... They're quite old, so... I mean, they were out for ice creams, so. and... You know, I, I it would be interesting to see the dynamic play out there, you know, like... A few years later, and they're like, Oh, cool, you're still together, and, you know, like... Chatting, and hanging out. Slide my arm around Matt and run my fingers through his hair, giving him a small kiss on the cheek. He giggles. Robert peeks angrily from the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Hey, I've actually been working on some new stuff. It feels really great to be writing again. Oh man, Matt, that's amazing. I love to listen to it sometimes. If, I mean, if you were comfortable sharing Maybe I could show you some new tunes I'm working on in the studio later. Why can't I work with you? I kind of play an instrument. We could make a band. You know I'm going to insist that we add a horn section. Matt rests his head on my shoulder and sighs happily. You know what? I'd actually like that. Aww. Aww, that's nice. Man, Robert was a dick at the end. <laughs> I thought he was cool, and then it was like... Damn it, Robert. I feel sad. They don't really say anything, and they're like, oh yeah, voice credits. It's like, all they say is, hey. Ooh, haha. <laughs> and you're like, what? That That's a voice acting role? I thought it was just some developer. Okay. 
so that's the end of that. Uh, yeah, like I said, I would have liked to see like a time skip further into the future where she comes back from uni and is like, oh, you two are still together. And you're like, together. And you're like, yeah. And, like you're working at the coffee shop together or something. Like, you know, what happened to them later? What happened to like, I don't know, Brian or Robert or whatever. But to be honest, I would have probably chosen Robert if I didn't fuck up the storyline. It was either him or Craig or Matt, basically. I might look at their stories, but like, and I want to know more about Joseph's wife because she seems so weird and the kids seem so weird. And that's kind of covered in a secret ending that, like I said, you have to hack or like mod back into the game because it was basically kind of cut as far as I understand or no one knows how to get the ending normally so they have to like push that kind of stuff forward yeah some characters I'm really interested in further knowing you know, further knowing their background, but I'm not really sure if I want to sit and be one of those channels where they do every single ending, and it's like, because I did that with the Pigeon game, and I kind of got burnt out, because there's a lot of clicking through stuff I've read before, and it's very hard to make that entertaining, where it's just like, yeah, we've seen this, yeah, we've seen this, yeah, we've seen this, yeah, we you know what I mean? And like, yeah, I can just start recording from when the new shit happens, I guess. But then I'm still sitting there on my own in a dark room, just going click, 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 click. click. <laughs> I look so weird next to her when it's like my avatar, and then they've drawn her in a new art style that doesn't look like her anymore. What the hell? It's like in a gorilla's art style now. Well, not really. I'm the best. I'm not the bad dad. Ah, oh, look. A tasteful, slightly more shirtless picture of him. It's got a pretty cool tattoo. So there we go. So like I said, there's like a few options that I could have gone through with, like Robert, Damien, Joseph, Craig, that kind of thing, Hugo, maybe Brian, but like, he annoys me. <laughs> so, you know, maybe, but like I said, with the pigeon game, ooh, gallery, oh, yeah, with the pigeon game, it really started to just hit me as like, oh, there's so much so much clicking, you need to have gaps between it, because it's like, you know, how visual novels are. At least this has mini-games. They're almost worth going through it just to see the mini-games. They play pretty well, they're not frustrating or anything, so that's good, and they're not really too in-depth. You know, I like to explore all the plot lines, but I don't really know if I can be bothered for this game. It's good, but like, yeah, like I said, burnt out before. Oh well, uh, I guess we'll finish it there, for now. If I feel like booting this up again, I guess I will. I don't know. I don't know. It feels like a weird place to end it. Mm. Anyway, bye.